can't always figure something out with a single glance. But as we come closer and closer, we'll gradually see what it should be. This scenario is one simple way of introducing the concept of limits. A limit is a number that a function reaches as the independent variable of the function reaches a given value. Consider this function. If we try to plug in 2, the answer will be indeterminate. Since we don't really know the value of 0 over 0, we need another way of answering this. So, instead of trying to figure it out for x equals 2, let's try approaching it closer and closer. In this table, we let x approach 2 by starting at 0. As the assigned values of x come closer to 2, you'll observe that the f of x gets closer to 4. Now, let's try approaching 2 from the opposite side. The f of x is clearly heading for 4 as well. As a graph, it looks like this. We now find ourselves at a confusing situation. We cannot exactly say what the value at x equals 2 is, but we know that it's going to 4. Now we want to say that the answer is 4, but we also can. So instead, mathematicians explain exactly what is going on by using the word limit. A limit is similar to climbing a hill where the top is restricted. But if we approach the hill from both sides, we'll eventually understand and see what is at the top by getting closer and closer. Unfortunately, we can't reach the actual top of the hill because we have a limit. And limit does not mean the same thing as equals, but they are related by a familiar notion which is continuity. We can easily tell that a function is continuous when you can trace its graph without lifting your pen. So how can we tell if it's discontinuous? Some things to look out for are holes, jumps, and vertical asymptotes. In more formal terms, a function is continuous at a particular point if these following three conditions are satisfied. To better understand this concept, let's take a look again at our previous example. It was proven a while ago that this function is undefined at x equals 2 as it gives us the answer 0 over 0. And we can also see that there is a hole in its graph. Therefore, this function is discontinuous at x equals 2. Now that we've covered all the practical examples, I hope you find this lesson captivating and analytical. Thank you for watching.